Hello and welcome everyone to the August uh, 2021 Windows Community Stand-Up Event. I'm Christina Warren, I'm a developer advocate and I am here as always with Mr. Kevin Gallo, CVP from Windows. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing great, how about you? I'm doing great, how about you? Awesome. Okay, so I cannot hear you right now. Uh, let me see if I can adjust my inputs, but this is not your fault. This is uh, us having tech problems. But I know that um, you and I, we actually we saw each other like, I don't know, uh, like, like six weeks ago um, at the Windows 11 launch event, which was awesome. And I know that a bunch of stuff has happened in your life since then. Uh, your daughter got married. Um, but uh, we're going to be here talking about design stuff, right? What can you tell us? Well, today we're going to talk about how app creators can start implementing some of the awesome Windows 11 design elements into their apps now. So I'm excited that we just published the new windowing APIs as part of the Windows App SDK 1.0 experimental release yesterday. So we want people to come and engage with us on GitHub and try out the samples. We'll show you how you can leverage and use UI with rounded geometry, how to participate in snap layout, and how to incorporate one of my favorite features, animated icons. Yeah, I know you love those Lottie icons. So I'm really excited that we're going to be able to look at those. Um, and as you mentioned, stuff was released to GitHub yesterday. And you want people to go to discussions there. But talk to me a second. So like as a developer, I understand a lot of stuff. But like, why should I be why should I care about design? Like, why does that matter? Why is that something I should be taking into consideration, especially with Windows 11? Well, users expect a certain amount of coherence from all apps. So they look and feel, you know, really matters to people. So that's why we think it's important for all app creators to start with system level experiences like rounded geometry and snap layouts. And we're working to make it as simple as possible to apply these basics to your app. We did first a lot of platform work in UX theme. So many of these control updates were done by the system itself. But apps with heavy customization, which really are some of our best apps you know, available to customers, you know, ones that actually customize things like their Windows frame, They'll need to do varying level of work depending on how they customize it. Now, to explain you know, why this happens and how to update your app, I'd like to introduce Eve. Thanks, Kevin. Hi, Christina, and hello, Hi. everybody. Uh, my name's Eve, and I'm a program manager on the Windowing platform. I'm excited to walk you through how you update your app to participate in both rounded geometry and have your app support new features like the snap file menu. I'll walk you through a demo I made of an existing WPF app that has made some customizations to its window frame and how I got it to get the new signature UI and UX of Windows 11 using the Windows App SDK windowing APIs. Let's take a look. Windows 11 has brought with it a beautiful modern UI and productivity enhancing features that your app can leverage. I've made a sample app here to show you how you can get the signature UI and UX of Windows 11 on your app using the Windows App SDK windowing APIs. They help ensure that your app looks and feels at home on Windows 11. This sample WPF app doesn't quite look like a Windows 11 app. It doesn't have rounded corners. The caption buttons don't look like Windows caption buttons. And when I hover over the maximize button, the snap flout menu that's supposed to help me lay out my windows doesn't show. This is happening because I've made customizations to my window frame. The title bar, the main, the max, and the close button, as well as the border, are all part of what is collectively known as the Windows non-client area. The platform manages most aspects of the non-client area, including its appearance and behavior in the default experience. But what happens if I want to add a little button over here? Or if I just want to change the color of my title bar? In the past, when you needed to style or add custom content in the title bar area, the platform offered little support. You had to throw the whole non-client area away and implement the entire title bar, including the minimize, the maximize, and the close buttons, just like this app is doing here. That's changing with the new Windows App SDK windowing APIs. The platform is providing more support so that you can focus on building out what matters to you and your users instead of spending time building out standard Windows functionality. For those building custom title bars and frames, the platform will take care of the main, the max, and the close buttons for you, as well as the border. 
Let me show you how we can update this app to be consistent with Windows design. Looking through my XAML file here, you'll see that I've made customizations to my window. I've set window style none and resize mode no resize. You'll also notice that I've defined my own window Chrome. This tells the platform to stop drawing the system provided title bar and border. This also means that the system can no longer round my corners if I don't have a border. So if your app isn't rounded on Windows 11 today, this could be one of the reasons why. And I recommend checking out our documentations page to learn more about why that might be and how you can fix it. Now going back to our XAML file, what we'll need to do here is we're going to remove these two lines of code, window style none and resize mode no resize, so that the platform can take care of the border for us. We're going to also remove the window chrome code so that the platform can take care of the title bar area for us. Now, if you've already drawn your own mean, max, restore, and close buttons, you don't need to do that anymore. And you can go ahead and remove that code as well. Let's look at the code behind and make some changes there. Here in my main window constructor, I have added some new code. The first line here gets me an app window from this function called get app window from WPF window. Let's take a quick peek at this function and see what it does. What's happening here is I am translating my hwind from my top level WPF window into an app window. The new windowing APIs allow you to interrupt between the high level easy to use WinRT APIs while still providing you with access to the power of the low level Win32 APIs. You can use these interrupt APIs to get an app window from whatever you're starting out with, whether it be a WPF window, a HWIND, or a XAML window. What this means is that you can keep your HWIND based operations while still taking advantage of the new app window APIs. Okay, so now that I have my app window, let's see what we can do with it. Now, if you want to have custom content into your title bar, we recommend that you use these APIs. By calling extends content into title bar equals true, you tell the platform to make room for your custom title bar while still letting the platform take care of the caption buttons for you. That is the mean, the max, and the close buttons. The system will draw the caption buttons over your content and provide you with that occlusion information so you can organize your content accordingly. You can also style the caption buttons with colors to make sure that they blend with the rest of your app's theme. Now let's run this and see the changes to my app. Pretty neat. My existing window now has rounded corners. It has the new look caption buttons. And when I hover over the maximize button, the snap flower menu does show up. Now to make a good comparison, I have the same instance of the same window running, but without the changes we just made. Look at that difference. I just showed you how you can make changes to an existing window to get this new look and feel. All new app windows get this by default and for free. Using the new Windows App SDK windowing APIs means that your app gets to evolve as Windows evolves. That is so cool. I love that so much. Great job, Eve. Uh, Thank you, Christina. Um, we strive to make it really easy for you to build your apps and we value your continued engagement and feedback as we continue work on the Windows App SDK. So keep giving us feedback um, so we can keep adding more support, more platform support to make it easy for you to incorporate these design elements into your user experiences. Um, so what other types of experiences are, uh, are people going to be able to, to do as well? Um, well, Kevin's going to show you one more. Um, WinUI, WinUI 2.6 actually already embodies most of these design updates, including the common control styles and typography. Okay. Um, and I think Kevin has something for us on that, on that line. Do you have something for us there, Kevin? Yep. Yeah. So um, something I actually really like are the micro animations. And I've talked about them, but they really sort of add something cool and engaging without being like overdone. And so that's why I encourage everybody to play with them and see how you can make just your app a little more playful. So for many of our common controls that use animations, you know, it really does improve the user experience. 
so they can make the UI, you know, just a little bit jazzier. Uh, and to show you just how easy it, it is, we created a demo to walk you through how to add it to your app. This is a WinUI sample app that I've updated to show how to add the delightful animated icon. This sample is available online today. This was originally published before Windows 11 design update, so my first step was to update it to the latest WinUI so I can get as much for free as possible. For example, this navigation view control has animated icons already built in. But the search icon, which looks like magnifier glass on top right corner in my custom search box control, doesn't animate. And I want it to animate to match the rest of the app. There are a couple of ways you can go about animating your icon. First is to create your custom animation using Lolly or download ones available from Lolly Marketplace. Let's do that. Here I've downloaded this Lolly JSON file that animates magnifying glass from Lolly Marketplace and I added markers. It specifies what part of animation I want to play with what interactions such as mouse hover and click. Then I converted it to C sharp using Lolly Gen and I've included it in this project under my animated visuals namespace. In this custom search box, I'm going to replace the query icon with this custom animation that I've created. Animated icon is included in WinUI Nougat package, so you see here I'm using MaxC, which is an alias we use for Microsoft UI XAML controls. In code behind, I've specified states when I want icon to animate. For this custom animation, I want mouse hover and click to animate my icons. So I've specified these four states, which is typical interaction you might want to support. If you have a more complex animation and interaction for your UI, it might be a good idea to use control templates visual state manager instead so you do not have to recreate all of the control state yourself. This is explained in our documentation in detail. Let's take a look at what happened. This is good but I want my animation to look more coherent with other animations. The good news is you can take advantage of built-in animation that shipped as part of WinUI to do that. And search animation is one of them. So let's do that. I'm going to replace this custom animation with animated find visual source which is a built-in search an icon animation similar to what you see in taskbar. While my custom animation had icon animate at mouse hover, we believe in less is better for simple experience like search. So our built-in animation icon doesn't animate while in hover state to mi minimize visual noise. The code behind code I showed you earlier will work fine in this case, so let's leave them alone. Now, let's take a look at the app again. The animation looks much nicer and I think this is good to go. That's so cool. I, I love those. I love those animations, as I know you do, Kevin. That that um that's a uh, a lot of opportunity, I think, for uh, for people to really add some personality to their apps, right? Exactly. It's all about adding that little bit of fun, something that's kind of a little different and, and makes it stand out. 
Yeah, no, I like that a lot. And and um, as a as as you mentioned earlier, the Windows App SDK 1.0 experimental came out yesterday. Is that right? Uh, yep, it came out yesterday. So uh, give it a try and take a look at it. Yeah, and, and join the discussion on GitHub because I know that that um, um, the teams will really be looking at that stuff. So. What I'm learning today is that not only will all the apps, you know, kind of get system updates by default, but there are easy ways, um, you know, to, uh, to uh, okay, sorry. What I learned today is that not all apps are going to be getting the updates by default, but that it's going to be relatively easy to fix and that you can utilize WinUI um, if you add, you know, want to add those really cool um, additions, like some of those Lottie animations, um, uh, which, you know, add some delight and fun, but uh, also improve app usability, uh, making interaction more clear, right? Exactly. And other frameworks uh, also support Lottie animations. So it's not just using WinUI. It's Road App, whatever framework you use, you know, add these kind of delightful elements that kind of align with the feel of Windows. Um, and obviously we made WinUI match because we use it in the system a lot and my other apps. Right. But you can go do it yourself. So whatever you use, whatever technology, Make your app fun and delightful and always keep improving it. Yeah, no, and I like that. I think that's important, right? I think that having that delight and having that fun, I mean, that's part of what makes software, I think, unique and, and it makes it different from other, from other things. They're, having that personality, I really enjoy. And I, 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 it's so clear how much um, input the and like thought like the, the design team has put into Windows 11. And I'm excited to see what uh, devs can do to make their apps really pop on the platform. Okay, so... Um, this is really great stuff. As, as you mentioned, um, some of this stuff is available right now in the SDKs on GitHub. There's a discussion available. We also welcome your feedback. So as you're playing around with this, as you're trying to integrate this into your own apps and, and see what stuff is, please let us know your feedback because I know that Kevin and, and everybody on the design teams are really, really responsive to that. So let's go ahead now and get some questions from the community because I know that there have been a lot of you who have a lot of questions about things um, in the design space with Windows 11. So the first question that we've got is, um, aren't some of these additions like Mica, which we didn't really talk about, but that's that background uh, material that is very cool, and these rounded corners, are these additions going to tank my app performance? Great question. Uh, no. Performance is really a top priority for us, and we want to ensure that all these fun new functionalities are super fast and don't impact the OS. Um, for example, Mica was specifically designed for higher performance when compared to things like acrylic because it doesn't sample the desktop wallpaper every frame. It only blurs the image once. For rounded corners, we optimized our rendering performance so that you shouldn't notice any difference compared to square corners. Okay, this is another really good question. This one uh, uh, came in. So will these design elements uh, and additions, will they work on an older OS? Because maybe not everybody's going to be able to be on Windows 11 as soon as it comes out. So will these things work on older OSs? So our WinUI controls are developed so when you use an older OS, they'll fall back gracefully based on what supports available on that version of Windows. For example, okay. while WinUI 2 is supported to 1703 down level, Lani animation really only works down to 1809 when it was introduced. So that said, we're kind of recommending that apps use the same look and feel so the app would feel modern everywhere, not just on Windows 11. This should reduce conditional code that you might have to write. You also get the best app everywhere. No, that's really great. That's awesome. Um, and I, I like the fact, yeah, I think that makes sense, right? So like, you know, focus on on maybe, maybe making it look good for Windows 11, but it's going to default gracefully down um, to those older versions too. Yeah. This is actually, so this is actually an interesting question. So anyone wants to know, how did I opt out of rounding and other new styles? So starting with WinUI 2.6, we're introducing style versioning. This allows you okay. to provide you know, with older styles if you have a reason to opt out to one version prior to the release. That said, we believe that adopting the new style really will benefit your app tremendously. The new visual design not only feels more modern, but it also offers greater improvements on accessibility and usability. And of course, it makes your app feel at home on Windows 11. 100%. It's going to look better. I, I understand there might be reasons people might want to opt out. Maybe they, they need more time or something. But I'm just going to say, as an end user, I want everything to look good. So, uh, but it's good to know that they they can they can um, um, uh, have that style versioning. I like that. And it's that's um, important because it gives them kind of a time to transition. And yeah. so Everybody needs that time. 
No, I think that's actually a really good point. That actually dovetails nicely into the next question, which is uh, asking about some um, of Microsoft's first party apps, you know, like Office and, and Teams. Um, uh, when were, are, are they going to be adopting stuff, you know, like the animated icons and, and Micah, rounded corners, all that stuff? Uh, yeah, we're coordinating across the company as we introduce the new Windows 11 fluent look and feel. And, you know, we want each app to kind of adopt it, but they're going to do that on their own schedule and their own cadence and what works for them. Um, it's not something, you know, we hugely coordinated for you know, one, one moment. And that's like true right. for everyone. Things like, you know, animated icons, you know, some will have them, some will add them along the way and they'll have them in different parts of their experience in a way that works for their customers and bringing them along. No, I mean, I, I appreciate the transparency there because I, mean, I think sometimes people would assume, oh, every, everything that Microsoft makes is gonna have it everything day one. But as you say, these are all different teams and they work on their own schedules and they have their own, um, you know, goals and stuff. And, and that's going to be the same with, with all the developers who are out there in the audience. Like you're going to have your own timeline and your own things you need to figure out. And so we're, we're kind of learning along with you in this case. Um, all right. So here's a question I've got for you. <laughs> when are you going to show examples for more complex apps? Because, you know, showing things like photos and the calculator, doesn't help uh, me who creates real apps. Although I'm sorry, the calculator is a real app. How dare you? But when are we going to see some more advanced uh, examples? No. Uh, <clears throat> we designed Fluent really in a way that works for many types of UIs, including specifically Dench UI. For example, Office has a fairly complex UI that is embracing Fluent so that it works for all kinds of interactions, touch, keyboard, and mouse, and pen and showcases you know, really more productivity-focused experiences. So it really works across a wide range of experiences, including the super you know, complex and detailed and fine-grained work that creating apps actually have. Okay, okay. Uh, here's another question for you. So, so you know, the new designs are nice and all, but the colors are seem to be subtle. So I don't know if that's a question or just a comment, but what can we say about like, I guess maybe the subtlety and like the design decisions uh, aesthetically behind that? We, we appreciate, you know, questions and comments. You know, when it comes to design, you know, we, we deliberately designed the color palette to look you know beautiful in both light and dark modes. I, I actually prefer dark mode. Uh, and so we want that to distract users from the content. You know, we're looking to expand on our color capabilities in the future, and we believe what we have now lays a great foundation to deliver more inclusive and delightful color experiences for everyone. Okay. So here's a question. Uh, it says, uh, you know, how do I get more information? Um, so I guess they're looking for more info on how to do this. Will Microsoft provide support if my apps don't get rounded corners, for example? So the best place to check is our developer guidance documentation at aka.ms slash Windows 11 design. If the question is about WinUI or Windows App SDK support, we have you know people on the GitHub communities that can respond and help you. Um, but those are the forms really where you can find out the most if you're having trouble. And as we learn from more apps and what they've done as a community, the goal is that we would share those learnings and we can all just make our apps better together. Um, I always do a nice search on the web, you know, to find out if someone else has done it in a different way that maybe um, pops a bit better, you know, and so we can just learn from each other. Okay, so we've got Docs, we've got GitHub, a, a good old fashioned uh, web search. Um, um, and yeah, and if you are coming across, I guess, solutions to things, and that, I'm just going to personally throw that out there, like share that with the community too, because as you said, this is how we're all kind of learning and, and helping one another. Um, okay, so, you know, somebody says that these design principles feel like Apple. Is Microsoft following? Are we followers now, Kevin? Or are, 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 are we lemmings? <laughs> so, so Good design tends to be similar. We learn from each other. But Fluent's been around a long time, and we're evolving with how people use our devices. You know, and that's changing all the time as we just kind of use devices in a new novel ways and combine them. And we believe that principles that are helpful in setting a frame of reference for the product vision, you know, but ultimately we want to create an experience that feels familiar, but also uniquely Microsoft. So we're excited that you're starting to see many of our Fluent design examples on our own UI surfaces and you know, they might look familiar, but our goal is that these things really do, you know, feel natural, normal, but Microsoft. Yeah, I, I like that. Also, I should just point out that that Steve Jobs famously said, and he was appropriating a Pablo Picasso quote, which I think was appropriate from someone else, which is, you know, um, 
uh, good artists copy, great artists steal. So if if we're uh, if we're if you think we're stealing, then I think that's that's a tribute to our designers. I, I'd say other people look at ours too, and I'm happy to let them. I agree. Look at ours. Earn, Absolutely, you know, steal from us too, right? Absolutely. Let's just make it better. Let's just make it better for everyone from what we learn. Totally agree, and and I and I think that that's good. I think you know, good good design is also good UI and good UX, and uh, and so everyone benefits from that. Um, okay, so this is a question. This is similar to one of the ones that we we kind of talked about this a little bit, but I think that this is a, a better question because it kind of hones in directly on some of the steps. Says, how do I support older versions of Windows? Do I need to create apps with multiple styles? So I, I actually, the reason I think I hear this question is it's really important to customers. And so, yeah. you know, again, our recommendation is that you bring the Windows 11 style to the older version of Windows. And it really helps you increase your efficiency, your customers see one version of your app. You know, and our goal with you know the Windows app SDK is that you know things like WinUI can handle the downloadable support to Windows 10 for you. And we ensure mm -hmm. your app is a different OS and we take advantage of what's available on that OS and we polyfill, you know, where there's not existing tech. You know, so for example, you know, we'll use existing fonts when the app's running on older versions rather than maybe using the new font for Windows 11. And materials like Mica will fall back you know, to a color instead. But the goal there is let, we'll try and handle it gracefully and make it easy, but take the best version of your app everywhere you go. Okay, okay, so um, it's gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna try to fall back gracefully when that works, but, but yeah, try to take the best um, version everywhere. That makes a lot of sense and I think, um, like you said, I think the reason people are asking this question is because they do have concerns because people have different upgrade cadences and people, you know, are are in the position to, um, you know, do things in, in different orders. So um, it's nice to know that it doesn't, it, at least it sounds like what you're saying is you're not going to have to recreate the wheel, you know, and, and simultaneously maintain, you know, two different versions. And we know that Windows 11 will you know, grow in numbers, but Windows 10 will be out there. So your customers will have a varying set of, of operating systems that are out there and they're using, but you want them to feel like your app is the same app for them. You know, yeah. I know I use multiple devices and clearly other people same. use multiple devices and some will have 11, some might not, you know, and, but the app feels the same. And our goal is to move everyone forward and yet make it efficient. No, I think that's a really good point because, yeah, like you, I, I use a bunch of different devices and, yeah, you want your app. I think that's always the goal is you want it to feel, uh, you know, consistent and native no matter where it is. So it's a great point. Okay. Um, thank you so much to the community members for these questions. These were really good. Uh, some of them were, were pretty funny, I have to say. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you so much, Eve. Um, as uh, as you mentioned, you can find more information at uh, for, for this event. Is it aka.ms slash win11design? Is that the link? Yes, right. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and, and then there's also a join the discussions on GitHub. All right, well, I think that does it for uh, for this uh, stand up. Um, Kevin, Eve, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us and talking about all this stuff. I'm really excited. Yep, thank you, Christina. I'm excited to see what everybody's gonna build. I always just get super excited to see the new things that people create uh, with the tools we give them. Make sure you add some, some extra animations for Kevin because he really he really loves those. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody.